Probably the most iconic fire ever known to humankind is the teepee fire. You see it in scout manuals, survival guides. You even see it in old images of natives dancing around the fire or somebody that's fallen through the ice and they're trying to warm up. Almost every film and TV show from the old westerns to modern survival shows, they show a teepee fire. It's probably the most well-known fire. It's iconic, it's, it's timeless. This is the fire that people usually wanna make when they wanna have a campfire going or a bonfire. The teepee fire is probably the most well-known hands down. There are definitely a lot of benefits to give it that reason, but there's also some detriments. And in this video, we wanna talk about that. When building a teepee fire, you have to remember you always put a platform down, regardless whether it's a log cabin fire, a long log fire, or a teepee fire. You put a platform down to get this damp, cold ground away from your kindling and your fuel and tinder. On top of that, you put your eh, birch bark, pine needles, whatever you've got. And on top of that, you start to build a small teepee. That small teepee starts off with matchstick and pencil sized twigs and works its way up to finger thick, two finger thick, wrist thick, bicep thick and eventually big solid fuel. As it burns, it's gonna consume every fuel as necessary. And you can build up from there, you can adjust the coals on the inside because the one problem with the teepee fire that I find is there's almost always gonna be a void and fires do not appreciate voids. So you gotta always be looking for little twigs here and there off the ground, preferably up off the ground like this branch here and feed them in until the fire at least has a good coal bed formed. Then, it kind of takes care of itself, but at first you gotta constantly be feeding it. And that's really one of the big problems with the teepee fire, is it's kind of hard to get in there, manipulate the coals, feed everything, make sure everything's nurtured. Fire needs attention, regardless of what style it is. Some fires need more attention, some fires need less attention. The beginning of a teepee fire, it needs a lot of attention. It's kind of like a toddler in that way. As it grows up, it can take care of itself, just like that toddler. They can start to take care of themselves, but they still expect you to take care of them, like a teenager. Now the biggest challenge, the biggest detriment to a teepee fire is no matter how much kindling you get in the center, it burns up fast, leaving a void up atop, on the inside. And the flames up atop need that heat from beneath them to keep burning nice and bright. Yes, there's a bundle of wood here, but when they got a bunch of empty space underneath, it cools down. So you gotta constantly be adding little twigs, sticks this size to sticks that size. You just keep adding them in there until the void is filled up with coals and then it'll burn substantially for quite a while. So always have enough leftover kindling from the startup to keep feeding it until you got this nice substantial flame going. You got a lot of flames, you got a lot of heat going, then you know that your fire is stable. And stability is the other detriment to a, uh, to a teepee fire. The biggest issue with them outside of a void, and the void is only a little bit of an issue, you just keep fiddling with it, it'll always burn but the stability is never gonna be resolved. No matter what, you're just leaning a bunch of sticks together and hoping they hold. You're just letting gravity and friction kind of keep it there. Unlike a log cabin fire or a long log fire where there's this big stable platform, everything's kind of counting on that fire burning in one point and the, uh, and the fuel constantly feeding back into that point. But sometimes, you know, a strong wind comes along, somebody bumps into the rocks that are surrounding the fire, whatever it may be, or you try to adjust a pot near it, you can knock it right over and the whole thing just falls apart. And you gotta start from scratch and hopefully not burn yourself in the process of putting it back together. That's the main reason I don't usually use a teepee fire. The real benefit though is this. Look at how many flames we're getting. Look at how much flame we're getting. For just a small amount of fuel, this is actually, you know, a pretty small teepee fire considering. And you got a huge amount of flamage. And that huge amount of flamage means a huge amount of heat very quickly. This fire didn't take a lot of time to build up and burn. So if I'm cold and wet, this drying me off, perfect. When I'm sitting out, uh, not necessarily camping, but maybe I'm hunting, I'll make a small twig fire, teepee fire, it'll keep my lower extremities warm. And as the heat rises, it warms my groin, warms my chest and stomach, warms my face. I don't need a lot of heat, a lot of fuel to get a lot of heat from a teepee fire. Because we're centering that heat into one point, and that's at the center of the teepee. The other benefit to this type of fire is the amount of light it throws. It casts a lot of light. 
off into the darkness. So a bonfire kind of situation where I want to be visible or I want to see around me or I want people to know that there's a fire here, that is a great way to do it. Another benefit, and this is really the secret to a teepee fire being so great for a lot of people, is in extreme weather. A teepee fire is going to survive longer than a long log fire or a long uh, or a log cabin fire out in the extremities, out in the uh, extreme. Or dealing with the elements, think about it. Long log or log cabin fire, all the woods nice and horizontal. Rain's dropping across the whole thing. Snow is falling across the whole thing. And as it burns, that's getting wet. And it's going to actually slow the fire down, not throw as much heat. Whereas if I have a, if I know there's a downpour coming and I put all my wood up diagonally in a conical shape like a teepee fire, the rain's going to fall off rather than leak down into the coals. This is actually becoming an umbrella. If I know there's really bad weather coming, I can just see the clouds are building. I'm going to take a little fire like this, go all through here, pick up every piece of rotted log I can find and build a giant lean, uh, giant teepee fire all the way around it. And that's going to burn for a while because rotted wood, well, it smolders. It doesn't flame up as much, but it's going to keep the rain off my fire, meaning my fire will survive. If I'm in extreme conditions and I got a good shelter built, I'll build up that big, you know, shelter around my fire as well while I stay out of the rain and keep my fire out of the rain. As long as I stay dry, I don't really need the fire until, you know, later on when the rain dies off and I've got a little damp and it's getting darker out. That's when I'm going to want to have some more flames. It's also a good way to keep a fire burning if you have to walk away for a while, which I don't recommend. Stay near your fire as long as it's burning. Uh, but in some situations, it's just not a possibility. You have to go out to hunt. You have to go out to fish. You have to go out to gather wild edibles. And that's just not a reality of, you know, if you've got just a bow drill fire, you have no matches, you have no lighter, no flint and steel or ferrocerium rod, you did your fire with a bow drill, do you really, really want to let that fire go out just because you want to be safe? Not likely. On the other hand, walking away, letting burning punk wood or rotted wood smolder away, it's a lesser two evils in that kind of situation. So in survival situations or extreme conditions, having a rotted uh, punk wood fire on top of your teepee fire will help let it burn for a while while you go out and handle your other needs, whether that be getting water, getting more firewood, getting food, or finding help. Is the teepee fire a good cook fire? Not really. There's very little uh, ability to put a pot on top because it's all uneven up there. The sticks are just kind of haphazard holding together. You could make a, you know, a pot hanger but that's a lot more work. There's other types of fires we can do for a cook fire. This is more what I would consider a warming drying fire. This is a very small warming drying fire. And as Morse Kahansky once said, a drying fire will dry your food, a cooking fire will cook your clothes. Use the right fire for the right task. And again, as you can see, the fire is burning down. We're starting to get a void. The flames aren't as high. So I've got to adjust my fire to fit those needs. I can also take these now smoldering pieces of wood and lay them down lower because we've got a bit of a coal bed now. And the bottoms of them, since heat rises, the bottoms of them aren't burning as hot. So I can easily knock this down, readjust it, grab my pieces of wood where they're not burning. If you got gloves, use them. These are my gloves for the most part. I get that one stick over there. I'm being lazy and not standing up right now. But as you can see, you know what you're doing. You work with fire long enough, you're going to build up calluses anyways, especially if you're using axes and the like. Is that a little bit more haphazard than the original nice little classy looking teepee fire? Yeah, this is a lot more haphazard, but you know what? It's still burning and it's burning nice. It's going to burn up hot again. You're starting to see the flames creeping back up. And as it burns, I have a good fire. So this is the teepee fire. There's a lot of other fire lays that we're going to be demonstrating in future videos, but this is one of the first ones you should learn. Uh, outside of this one, there's also the lean-to fire, the long log fire, which we've already done a video on. You also have the log cabin fire. You also have the Finnish fire, the hunter's fire, uh, the Swedish torch, which is a whole different thing. But this is a good starting point. If you want to learn making fires, of course, do it in safe conditions. Move leaves and debris out of the way so it's not going to be lit, lit up by sparks or flames. Make sure you're not in a drought condition or uh, going against a fire ban. 
Make sure you're following the local laws in your region regarding fire lighting and fire use. Uh, but experiment, play, practice. The more you practice with this stuff, the better off you're going to be in a real situation where you need to depend on a fire. Uh, there's always those seven Ps. Proper planning prevents piss poor performance. And this is a good way to practice that and follow that practice and protocol. So, I'm Caleb Musgrave from Canadian Bushcraft. Thanks for watching. I want to start enjoying the fire.